Hi, welcome to the Mighty Loop How to Play. I'm Mirek, one of the creators of the game, and I will guide you through the rules of the game, adding some example solutions for the gameplay. This video consists of chapters that explain different aspects of the game and the gameplay itself. You can skip to a particular one if you have specific questions or problems to solve. Let's start with some background. Mighty Loop is the game about young adepts of alchemy participating in the tournaments of Magical Alchemy Great International Championship. Magic Championship in short. During the game, you will learn how to cast invocations in order to transmutate and multiply elements. The young adept of magic, who will successfully cast the spell with victory token on it, becomes master of magical alchemy, MMA in short, and becomes the winner of the game. Main purpose of the game in the context of GoPro 2 project is to practice logical thinking and educate on problem solving. This is achieved in the game by basing it on the algorithmic block diagrams used in IT. They are disguised as incantations. More on this in the following chapters. This video is focused on the regular versions of the game. From our experience, it takes from 1 up to 2 hours to finish this type of game. There is also the advanced variant. From our experience, it takes more than one and a half hour to finish. Manual also covers the first game, practice before tournaments. It is a short version of the game that will get you familiarized with it, and it should take about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. You can play it right away or start with any other variant of the game. More information about the advanced variant will be at the end of this video. Let's start with the unboxing. Each Mighty Loop consists of manual, one sheet, three bags of challenge cards. These bags consist of four types of challenge cards. One of the bags has two types. Now let's go with figurines for four players. You can play with more players, but you need to find some uh, figurines for them. Dices, they are called Philosopher's Stones in the game and they represent each element. The bag with the power crystals, the first player token, which is wrapped in the bubble foil, and the victory token in it. Bag with elements and transportation circle. The circle represents the order of the transmutation of the elements. This baggage contains all the basic cards for the incantations. There are few types of the, of the cards here. There are cards for the transmutation, cards for the selection of the order of the transmutation, green ones and red ones, double cards that will multiply elements, and a reversal card with a little more brownish color that is explained in the later chapter. The second bag of the incantation cards. These are two sets of the cards. One set is the incantation filter and the second set is the mighty loop set. Uh, they consist of the starting and ending card. And gold coins, the rewards for the completion of the challenge cards. This is the complete set of Mighty Loop. In case some parts are missing or you run out of them during the game, for example one color of elements, you can use any other cards or tokens that you have at your disposal, for example from other board games. The game was designed for 4 players, but you can play it with more people, you just need to find some additional elements. So here we have one set of Mighty Loop cards. These are the beginning cards and these are the ending cards, we always need to use two of them. Here we have the similar case, here is the incantation filter card with its back. I will rotate it to the correct orientation. These two sets are always double. Here we have the basic card for transmutation, it means that we can change one element into another, and here we have transmutation flow cards for this one, they told us where to go with our transmutation 
based on our transmutation circle here. Transmutation circle is double-sided and the side of transmutation circle is decided by this card, the reversal card. We have only four cards of it and this card changes the order on the transmutation circle here. The last but not the least, we have element double cards which are the cards that allow us to multiply elements. Each of these cards on their backs have number of gold coins that they're cost. It doesn't uh, apply for the cards for the end of the Mighty Loaf, the end of the Incantation Filler card. Here we have Power Crystals. These are the uh, cards that we use to select lines of our incantations. Here is the Victory Token. It's double-sided as well. Here we have Dices. These are the Fields of our Stones and they are substitute for our elements. Our elements are here. There is six types of elements. Red, yellow, blue, purple and the orange and the green. Here we have gold coins that are our rewards for the completing of the challenges. And here we have figurines of the players. Moving on, here is the first player token. It's the crystal that is going to be passed at the end of each turn. And here we have four types of challenge cards. Each type of challenge card has its number and its distinct color that describes how hard it is to complete this challenge. And at the end we have our manual. Playing the game consists of the preparations and the actual gameplay. The first one splits into preparation of the starter kits for each player and building the board. The actual gameplay happens in turns after preparations and splits into three distinct phases. First one is the incantation phase, when you face the challenge card. Whether you succeed in the challenge or fail it, it will have some impact on the next phase. Second one is the buying phase, which allows players to buy or sell cards and elements of the game that will give necessary tools to finish tougher challenges. When all players finish their purchases, the next phase starts. The last is the movement phase. It is the one when alchemists decide on which challenge they want to take on next. It is important to find the path that will be achievable with the tools you have. When the movement phase is ended, players start again with the incantation phase and afterwards proceed to the buying phase, and then to the next movement phase. Remember, when the movement phase ends, the first player token is passed to the next player on the left. This cycle repeats until one of the players manages to fulfill the challenge with the victory token. Each incantation starting set contains of seven elements. Figurines, Philosopher's Stones, Power Crystal, Transmutation Flow Cards, Incantation Filter and Transmutation Card and later we will add some elements. Let's start with the player. So for the green player, we need to give him one set of incantation filter cards, one transmutate card, one of each modifiers, one power crystal, one philosopher stone. And this is a complete starting set without the elements for one player. When all players complete their sets, they need to get their starting elements. To do this, each player should roll their Philosopher's Stone dice three times. So let me simulate it for the green player. The order is as follows. Take a dice and roll it the first time. The player takes a single element that dice will end up showing. In my case, it's a single yellow element for this player. Now take the dice and next the second roll. The player takes two elements the dice will show. In my case, it's orange, so it's for me two orange elements. And for the third last roll, the player gets three elements of the one shown on the dice, so for me it will be three orange. 
approach our pets. And that's it for the green player. Now let's move to the others. Now, the player who most recently saw any movie or read any book about magic starts the game and receives the first player token. The person with the first player token is always the first player and next players are the ones following in clockwise orientation. So, let's say that our green player was the last one to see any movie about the magic. So he will receive the first player token. That is for this part. All players have their invocation starting kit, so now we will proceed with the board building. First, we need to prepare stacks of the challenge cards. There are four types of these cards. It is the level that represents how hard it is to finish a particular challenge. Green cards with number 1 are the easiest cards. Blue cards with number 2 are second to the easiest challenges. You will need to buy some cards to be able to finish it. Red cards are tough challenges. It is necessary that you will be well equipped with your invocation cards to finish these ones. Purple cards are for the advanced version of the gameplay. They are really hard and need some planning ahead to be finished. We don't need them in our regular variant. Now let's start with the green cards. Take them all and shuffle. And now place it facing down. Do the same for the red and blue cards. Now, the question is how many of you will be playing the game? We tested the game for one up to four players and yes, you can play this game alone if you will. It should still be pretty enjoyable. From the red stack here, take as many cards as there are players. I will be playing with two more players, so the number of players is three. In this case, I take three cards from the stack and place it on the other stack. Now, from the blue stack, I will take twice as many cards as there are players. For the three players, I will take six blue cards. Three, four, five, six. And I will place it in front of the stack. From the green at the end, I take three times as many cards as there are players and place it on the last stack. So I will take nine cards. The smaller stacks are the ones which we will build our board from. The bigger stacks will be used later in the game to refill the board. So now we can take them out. Now we need to follow four rules here. We have to use the card from the prepared stack of the highest available level. So we will start with the red stack because this is the highest level. Each card must be adjacent to at least two other cards and this rule does not apply to the first two cards on the board. Last, any card must not touch a card that's two or more levels higher. Four, each player has to place one card at a time, starting from the first player. Now, according to these rules, I will build an example game board. I will start here as the first player with token, and I will place this card in the middle of our board. I will move these stacks a little bit. Now, as a second player, I'll take another red card and I will place it somewhere. For example, let's place it here. Now, as third player, I'll take the last red card and place it here. Remember that it needs to obey the rule about cards needing to be adjacent at least to two other cards. This rule starts now. Now, the next stack with the highest card will be the blue stack. As the first player again, I take one card and place it here. Now as a second player, now as a third player, and starting with the first player, and let's place as a second player here, and the last card, let's place it here. Now as we stack, start with the green stack, we need to remember the green cards being level 1, cannot touch cards from level 3, so they cannot go here, we need to place it 
for example here. And now as the clockwise orientation And now the board is done. We need to do two last things. The first player needs to put the victory token on one of the red cards. Completing a challenge from this card will finish the game and the player succeeding will be the winner. So remember to not make it too easy for your competition. I will place it as a first player for example here. Second, players starting from the first player place their figurines on any green challenge cards that are not occupied by the other players. Remember to place it on the challenge card that you will be able to succeed. I will place green player here. Now second player. And the third player. This ends all preparations. Let's start the game. Okay, so now let's start our game. This is the biggest and hardest phase of the game, so there will be some talking about the rules, but don't feel intimidated, and you will catch it quickly. First of all, let me hide this for one moment. We don't need this now. And let's start with our first player here. I will be simulating each player separately. So, at the beginning of this phase, players grab the challenge cards their figurines are standing on. These are the challenges that players try to solve by preparing an incantation. So, let me grab this card. Here we can see our challenge card. I will take all the cards for each player now. Okay. So time to talk a little bit about incantations. First, they always need to start at least with one power crystal. So, let me grab one and place it here. You should make some space in front of you to do this. Now let's look at our challenge card. More of all the signs on the challenge cards later, now let's focus on the main task. We need to transmit elements on the left side here to the elements on the right side here. We always need to use the exact number and type of elements from the left side. As for elements on the right side here, it depends if the card has stars around the sun. Without the stars, like on this card, challenge demands from players that they will receive the exact number and type of elements as shown on the card. If the stars are present, it means that incantation can end with any number of elements and their type, but at least with the ones shown on the right side. Let me grab one card to show you the card with stars. Here we have the card with stars, so this means that we need to receive at least one purple element at the end, but we can have a lot of other elements. Let's put it back to the board. Okay, so back to our game. Here I have one red element that needs to be changed to one green element. Exactly one, because there is no stars around the sun. So I need to bring one red element and change it to the green one. Here, on this card, we need to change uh, one orange element into one purple element. Exactly. And here we need to change one purple element to one orange element. Let's start here. I will need to assign some elements to my incantation. As you can see, I don't have red element. So I will use my Philosopher's Stone. It's the universal element that will be in my disposal for all the game. I will place it next to the power crystal with the correct color facing up. So now we need to do some changes. In order to do that, I will take one card of transmutation. This card allows us to transmute one element from the left side to the one element on the right side. But that's not the end. To work, this card needs the transmutation flow cards, like these ones. They describe how far and which way transmutation should happen for the elements, based on the transmutation wheel here. So we can see that in order to change one red element into one green element, we need to go either five times 
to the front of the, the right uh, order or backward one time. So for me, I will take my transmutation flow card and put it here. This will mean that we will transmutate our elements from the red one to the green one in, back in the order. The red card is back in the order, the green card is in the correct order. We need to place all our cards below the power crystal and we need to place our transmutation flow cards on the left side of the transmutation card. To recap, to prepare this incantation, first I have placed power crystal, second I have assigned starting elements, third I have put the transmutation card to transmute starting elements into other ones, and the last four I have put the transmutation flow card to select how far and on what side of transmutation wheel I will move my elements. All players do their invocations at the same time and when everybody is ready, they check invocations of the players on the left. So this player will check invocation of the player on the left, this player will check invocation of the red player, and red player will check the invocation of our first player. So let me quickly simulate all the invocations for all the players. Okay, so that's it. To check the invocation, you should, for example, if I will be the red player checking the invocation of the starting player, I need to look at the correct order. So I will look at my red element here. I will go here. I see that I need to move one backwards. One backwards from the red is green. So in the end, I will receive one green. So this is exactly what our invocation was supposed to do change one element into another, red one to the green one, and we achieved that. For this player, we have to change orange element into purple one. So from here to here. So I will go here. I see that I need to change my element backwards in order. So one back to purple. And now I will use elements from our stack and replace them. And the same goes for the last player. Here I need to change purple into orange. So purple into orange is one in uh, correct order. So we go here, we have transmutation, we go in the order, so here. So I will change this element into the orange one. Alchemists don't have to complete challenges with their incantation each turn. Instead, they can use this phase to transmute or multiply their elements. There can be three results of the incantations. 1. Incantation is correct and the challenge is fulfilled. 2. Incantation is correct but the challenge is not fulfilled. And 3. Incantation is incorrect. Based on these results, there are different awards for the players. Here we have all invocations correct. So, if the invocation is correct and the conditions of the challenge card are meet, so changing here, creator of the invocation, so the players assigned to each challenge, receives a re reward for completing the challenge. Gold coins in the amount shown on the challenge card and the challenge card itself, which can be later used as a card for invocations as well. So, this is the case for our table here right now. If the invocation is correct, but the challenge card conditions are not met, for example wrong types or amounts of elements, the creator gets transmitted elements, so the one resulting at the end, and loses all elements assigned to mighty loops and incantation filters on all lines, gets transmitted elements, and in addition the creator gets one additional element of the type of their choice the challenge card returns back to the board. If the incantation is incorrect, no matter the amount of lines of the incantation, its operations are not being checked. The creator loses all elements assigned to the cards in the invocation. At the end, the creator gets one additional element of the type of their choice. The challenge card returns back to the board to its previous place. So, for our case here, all the cards come to the players and all of them receives two gold coins.
now we will need to refill our board. So back to our stacks that we prepared before the game. Starting from the first player, we will place the first card on the place we have stood. When everything is settled, players proceed to the next phase. In this phase we can use our hard-earned coins to buy new invocation components. Starting from the first player, we will buy new cards or elements. For now we don't have many gold coins, but we will get more of them soon. Each championship participant can buy any number of components. The only exceptions are the transmutation flow cards. Each alchemist can have a maximum of 10 transmutation flow cards, regardless of type, and cannot buy more. The cost of the cards is in the table in the manual and on the back of the cards. When everybody will end buying, we can proceed to the last phase before we will start casting alchemic spells again. Starting with the alchemist with the first player token, alchemists move the owned figurines to an adjacent space. They can't stay in the same space. Each alchemist needs to move to another card. So let me simulate this on our board. We will move this one, for example, here. We don't want to go here because these are hard challenges. This player can go here. This player can go here. For example, on our board, let's say that we want these two players on this card. Players standing on the same space secretly choose any number of their cards and elements, but remember, in the bidding war, each card and element is worth exactly the same, one gold coin. When players are ready, they reveal what they have bid. Highest bidder wins. Everything used in the bid is discarded, so be careful to not lose your most important cards. The winner stays on the chosen space, while others need to move back to their previous space and then to another adjacent space. So for example, in this situation, let's assume that this player have bid four elements on one card, and this player bid three elements. In this case, this is the winning player, so this player stays on the card, but this needs to move, so he can move here or here. Let's say we will go here. All the elements in the bidding war comes back to the pool. Some additional rules. If there is no legal move for the player, for example other players occupy space around, the player doesn't have anything to bid with them or already lost bidding with them in this turn, that player stays in their original spot, skips next incantation phase and gets one element of their choice. Second, if there is a tie, the player who has moved to the space first wins. Third, the same players cannot bid for the same spot more than once during one phase. Fourth, bidding players have to bid at least one component. When all players will move their figurines to their spots, this turn ends and the new one begins. Remember to pass the first player token. So, here is an example of the green challenge card. We need to transmutate one green element here and one yellow element at the same time to the red element and to the orange element. We can see that we can move once back to fulfill this incantation. So, first of all, we need our power crystal to start our incantation. It is a must. 
Now we will use our transmutate card and based on the transmutation wheel we will move backward one time this way we need also to assign our elements in my case it is one green and one yellow so this incantation is finished here we can see that when we will go down from the top to the bottom if we will go with our yellow incantation here we will see that we will move backwards once so this will become green element and this will end here we can see that we have one green element and when we will move here we can see that we move backwards once to the orange element so we have this at the end this means that incantation is correct and is fulfilled because we changed green one and yellow one to the correct elements now let's show some bad example we can start with placing our elements and we will place our transmutate card here and backward card here intuitively this should be okay but we lack our power crystal here so this incantation is incorrect it's not uh, fulfilling the challenge and it's not correct even to start with so in this case the player will receive only one element of their choice and the card is going back to the board let's get started with another bad example so we will put our starting elements here we will put our power crystal here and we will put our transmutate card this is bad because we don't have any transmutation flow cards so let me add one here now this incantation is in terms of the placement good but let's see what happens when we will go with the yellow one here we will move in order from the transmutation wheel and we will change yellow to the blue element and the same goes with the green one when we move here we will move forward we will receive one red element here and the incantation has ended in this example the incantation itself is correct in terms of the legality of the cards but it's not fulfilling the challenge so in this type in this type of situation the card itself goes back to the board player doesn't receive any gold he will receive an element of its of his choosing for example this one uh, and he will keep all the elements okay so another example of the green challenge card we see that we need to transmutate one purple element into one yellow element we can see on our transmutation wheel that we can either go four times forward or two times backward so this is one thing the other is that we have stars around the sun this means that we have we can have any number and types of elements at the end but at least one yellow element so let's start with first good example we will start with power crystal we will take our purple element we need to transmutate it so we will use our transmutation card and we will use our transmutation flow cards twice backward this means that when our purple element enters the incantation it goes twice backward and we will receive yellow element at the end another good example of this incantation is this one we can we should start with our power crystal we will assign purple element element here and now we will use different uh, kind of card the element doubler card this card works on itself by multiplying elements but it can also be modified but by transmutation flow cards so if we will add again two modifiers backward 
we will have the challenge that when element will enter here we will go backwards two times to the yellow element and we will double it so in this type of situation we fulfilled our challenge because we need to have at least one yellow element at the end and now bad example of incantation we will start with our power crystal we will add our starting element purple here and we will use our trans uh, element double card but in this situation we will receive only double purple elements which will not fulfill the result of the challenge so this is bad example this is correct incantation but it's not fulfilling the challenge requirements another bad example of this incantation we will start with our power crystal we will add our starting element and we will add our double transmutation flow cards this is incorrect incantation because transmutation flow cards doesn't work separately they need either the double cards or the transmutation card in this way the incantation is incorrect now let's go to the example of good incantation for the blue card here we have a pretty complicated incantation already we see that we have yellow and orange elements that needs to be transmutated into blue and purple we can see that this is two-way incantation so to do this when we will start with our power crystal and we will assign our elements to this incantation we can use our incantation filter card here we always need to use both starting and ending card and here on the incantation filter card we will split our incantation to two ways and then merge it at the end we need to put the element here this element will decide which element is going on this side whilst the other elements will go to the to this side so let's put our yellow element here now we need to do some transmutations we need to have exact number of the elements so we cannot use our double card so we will use our transmuted card here we will start from this side our yellow should go for the blue so we will add one transmutation flow card forward here and our orange should go backwards to uh, receive the purple so i will add another transmuted card with the backward transmutation flow cards so in this case when we will check this incantation we will go with our yellow element here we, sh we see that we should go this way here we will transmutate our yellow card one forward so to the blue one and then we will merge it at the end as for our orange element we see that we should not go there but we should go with the other elements here here we have going backward from the orange to the purple and we will merge at the end this is correct incantation at and it fulfills all the requ requirements of the challenge card at the end of this incantation we should get rid of the element we assigned for our incantation filter this way we will always lose one element if we will use our incantation filter card the same goes for the mighty loop cards another good example of this incantation uh, is to use two power crystals each power crystals represent one line of the incantation that is separate and distinct from the other one so when we will assign our elements now we can assign one yellow element here and one orange element here now we need to transmutate our elements so 
we will go with orange one one backward and with our yellow one we will go one forward this incantation is now complete when we will go with our yellow one here we see that we will change it to the blue one and we will end this line now with the second line we will go with our orange element here and we see that we will go one backward to our purple element and it will be ended here we merge our elements as well as on the start and we see that the incantation is correct and the requirements of the change card are fulfilled now let's go with the bad example let's use our incantation filter cards let's start of course with our power crystal let's assign some elements at the start and let's say we will use our incantation filter here and at the end we will use our transmutate cards here on the separate lines and with the one line we will go one forward and in the second line we will go one backward now this is incorrect incantation and the challenge is not fulfilled because there is no element here we need to assign at least one element here we cannot use our philosopher's stone dice here this is not allowed but what we can do is we can use one element here and then use our philosopher's stone card here this way this incantation will be correct but without this this is incorrect incantation and the challenge card is not fulfilled and now for the other bad example we will start with our power crystal we will assign our elements to it we will use this card here and we will use these cards here these cards here and we will assign one element here this incantation is also incorrect because there is no ending card always incantation filter cards and the mighty loop cards needs to have the ending here without it the incantation is not correct let's go with new challenge card and a good example of it we have now to change two purple elements and two orange elements into at least one uh, green and one blue element so looking at the circle we have these two to change into this one and this one so let's start with our power crystals let's use two power crystals here let's assign some elements here we can see that this challenge card is pretty demanding in the amount of elements that we need to start it so here let's go like this these two will go here and these two will go here remember to assign elements to correct power crystal so we now need to use at least transmutation card with the transmutation flow card in this case to change two orange elements into at least one green element here we need to go forward and here we can use element double card for example with one backward this will change purple elements into blue elements because we have stars around the sun that means that we need to have at least one green and one blue so let's check it here when we enter we will change orange elements these ones into green ones so let me grab green elements and here this is the end for this phase and here we will use purple to change it back to blue we will enter here and we see that we have element double card so that means that all elements will be doubled here so first let's change purple to blue ones and then double them and at the end we will receive these elements 
this incantation is correct and the challenge card is fulfilled because we have at least one green and one blue element. Now for the bad example, let's use similar situation as before. So two power crystals and let's us assign elements. And let's use the cards here. So this incantation is correct. So everything that will happen here happens. So these two goes here, they will become green. And then they will finish. And this purple here will come here. They will change back to blue ones. And then we will double them. So this is our end. But this is not fulfilling the challenge card because here we only had to use two purple elements. We cannot use more elements than shown on this card. So the player keeps his elements, but the challenge card is not fulfilled because we had three purple elements here on the start, not two. So now let, let's go with a good example for one of the toughest cards in the deck. This card can be a winning card. So there is a lot of elements that we can have to use to fulfill it. Let's start with two power crystals. So we will have two separate lines. Now let's assign some elements to the deck. We need to change red and purple, so these two into four orange, exactly four orange, because there is no stars, and one green, so these two. To fulfill that, I will use Mighty Loop card. Remember that we will need to use both cards at the same time. So let's put it here and here. So I will change my purple element into my green element. So twice to the front. So I will use regular transmutation card with two arrows, arrows pointing front. This will change our purple to green. For this, we need to use, we need to have four orange elements at the end. This is requiring us to use at least one element double card and we will go once backward and then second times backward. So I will use one transmutation flow card back. And now here, the mighty loop needs to have some elements assigned to it. Remember that we can only assign maximum three elements to mighty loop. The number of elements on this card will tell us how many times we should repeat the cycle here. We should put at least one here, but for me, for this time, let's put two elements here. So now the incantation is finished. Let's see if this works. We have purple element going here, twice forward, one, two, and we received one green element here. And this is the end for this line. As for this line, we will go here. We see that we should repeat this loop twice. So here we enter. We have element double, doubler and once backward. So from red to green and doubled. So I will receive one green and then doubled because of the element double. We have two greens and we are at the end of the loop. This was our first pass through the loop here. So now for the second pass, I move all the elements back to the start and I enter the loop once more and I will transmutate once more backwards to orange my both greens. So this like this. And now element doubler, doubler will double our, our elements here. Now we finish our loop. This was the last time loop has fired because it was only twice. And we go to the end. We can see that the incantation is correct. 
and the challenge is fulfilled because we changed one red and one purple element into four orange and one green element. These two elements are coming back to the pool because everything used in the incantation on the loop cards or incantation filter cards always goes back to the pool. Components reference. Now we will talk a little bit about elements that are in the game. We will start from the elements. These are the tokens that we are using in our incantations to fulfill our challenge requirements. Translation card and element double card. These two cards allow players to change elements or to double them. The transmutation cards needs the transmutation flow cards here, these ones, to show the directions of the transmutation. While the element doubler card can function by itself, it can still be also modified by the transmutation flow card. Transmutation flow cards they allow players to change elements. Green forward and red backward cards modifiers correspond to the transmutation circle card, this one, and specify how the elements are transmutated. To function, they need to be placed to the left of the transmutation card, this one, or the element double card, this one. For the doubler card, these modifiers work by transmuting the elements before they will be doubled. Mighty Loop card set, this is the start card and the end card. It allows you to repeat the same sequence of operations up to three times. Before starting the incantation, place up to three elements on the starting card. All the instructions between start and end cards are performed as many times as there are elements on the start card. After the incantation, all elements placed on the start card are discarded. Both cards have to be used in the incantation. If not, the incantation is incorrect. Incantation filter card set. This is the starting card and this is the end card. It allows splitting the incantation into two separate lines. Before starting the incantation, place an element on the starting card, here. During the incantation, all the elements of the same type as the one on the starting card, here, follow this line. All the other elements run the line on the right. Elements join again after the ending card. After the incantation, the element placed on the start card, here, is discarded. Both cards have to be used in the incantation. If not, the incantation is incorrect. The Reverso card. It can be used in two different ways. During the challenge phase, it can be played on the transmutation circle. It reverts the direction of that circle for all players. After use, flip the transmutation circle to the other side, like this. This effect is permanent. It can only be undone by using another Reverso card. In the, inc the second use, is in the incantation phase. It can be used as incantation block. It reverts the transmutation's direction of the elements for the operation that it's attached to. For example, it can be used that way. This means that transmutation will not happen in the order of the circle, but it will happen backwards in this example. Transmutation circle. It shows how the elements are transmutated into another one. The arrows show the order of transmutation. It can be switched to the other side by using the reverso card. Player figurines. They show which challenge card the players will have to face in the turn of the incantation. Philosopher's stones. These dice can be used as any single element of your choice each Philosopher's Stone can be used once within an incantation. After the incantation, whether it's correct or not, Philosopher's Stone becomes neutral again and player can use it again in the next phase. To use it, place the dice with the desired element on the top, facing up. For example, if I would like to use orange, I will put it like this. Power Crystal. Each Power Crystal allows the player to run a single, parallel line of the incantation. Each line is treated separately 
with its own elements and incantation blocks. The elements transmitted at the end of the incantation lines are summed up after all the incantations are finished. Power crystals can be used without any other cards. For example, you can start with the single Orangium token and leave the incantation empty to receive one orange token in the end. For example, you can have this situation. In this situation, when the incantation is finished, you will receive one red element changed backward to the green one, one blue element changed forward to the purple one, and one blue element that did not did anything. So at the end, we will receive these elements. Gold coins. They are the awards of winning or selling cards, and they allow players to buy new cards and elements. Victory token. Victory token placed on the card means that when player fulfills the requirements of the challenge card the token is placed on, the player will win the game. It has both sides, but they, they are irrelevant to the play. Challenge cards. These cards are the base of the play. For example, in this type of card, we have few symbols that represent different things. On the top, we have the number that represents the level of the card, so how hard the card is to be fulfilled. It is accompanied by the color of the card. The stars around the sun means that the result of the challenge can be at least the number and type of elements placed here, but not inclusive, so we can have more elements and more types of elements at the end. On the left side, we have the requirements for the starting elements. This has to be met exactly. This means that we have to use two purple elements and two orange elements, and none less, none more. On the right side, we have the price of the fulfilling the challenge card. In this example, the award of fulfilling the challenge card is three gold coins. The symbol of the on the bottom of the challenge card means that if we will win this card and later we will give it back to the pool, we will receive one gold coin back. The first player token. This token represents the player that starts the round and different parts of the phases. When the movement phase is finished, this token goes to the next player on the left of the player currently holding it. Usually, in the regular variant of the game, when we start to build the board, for example in this situation when we have three players, we place three red cards, six blue cards and nine green cards, starting with the highest level, so with these cards. At the end of the placement, the first player will put the victory token on one of the red cards of his choosing. That will mean that this card, when fulfilled, will end the game and the player that will finish this challenge will win the game. For example, if we will build a little bit of this board, This will be the finished board for the three players. But in the advanced version of the game, there is another type of challenge cards. There are only three cards from this challenge. And in this way, in this variant of the game, we will start from these cards. So let me prepare the, stack, the stacks again. Okay, so for the advanced version, we will take only one card here. These cards will be to used to refill the board, of course without these cards, because they will not be used anymore. And starting from the first player, he will put this card first on the board, and if there is a purple level 4 challenge card on the board, it immediately receives the victory token on it. The rest of the cards follow the rules 
as for the re regular variant of the game. So when we have two cards, we need to place them that will touch two more. So to sum up, in this variant of the game, players will not only have to finish the third level of the cards, but also finish the fourth level. This will prolong the game and will require a lot of thinking and planning ahead to be able to finish it the first player.